FPD series, Finding Surface Area and Its Related Dimensions. We are thrilled that you have joined us this afternoon and hope that you, after having participated in this webinar, are better equipped to teach this content. My name is Renee Kramer. I teach AVE in southwestern Minnesota and I'm one of the facilitators today. I'll now turn the, <laughs> turn the floor over to our second facilitator to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Rebecca Strom, and I teach um, ABE Math in Mankato area. And then we have for technical support. Welcome everyone, this is Astrid Leiden and I work at the ABE office of the Department of Education and coordinate professional development. I'll be your uh, host and tech support today. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties, um, we'll just ask you to um, chat me in your chat box at the bottom of your control panel. We will be recording the webinar today for those who um, weren't able to join us. Um, I do want to take a minute now for those of you who are not familiar with the GoToTraining webinar platform to orient you to our environment. I do see many familiar names though, so I think um, most of you have been here before. We have muted all participants to cut down on background noise, so the best way to communicate with the rest of the group is through the chat box. If you have questions throughout the webinar, you can send them to the entire group in your chat, um, and the presenters will answer those at the end of the webinar if there is time. If not, we will uh, follow up with those on our Equip Moodle site. If you have technical questions, you can select my name and chat with me directly. I um, also want to let you know that you can um, collapse your control panel to create more room uh, for the PowerPoint by clicking on the red arrow on the left-hand top side of your control panel. So by clicking that, you can collapse your control panel. If you click it again, it will expand it again. And we will not be using webcams today just because of the size of our group. Enjoy the webinar. All right, so as you can see, we are presenting the fifth Equip Math Professional Development Webinar today. If you weren't able to join us for previous um, ones, be sure to navigate to either atlasave.org or 2014inminnesota.org where they are archived. Let's get started in our quest to finding surface area and its related dimensions. So our objectives for this webinar are the following. When given geometric formulas, compute volume and or surface area of rectangular and right prisms, cylinders, right pyramids or cones, spheres, composite 3D geometric figures, and we would also like when given volume or surface area, solve for length of side or height. Um, that information too before we are done today. Well, we're going to first begin by reviewing area. So what is area? Area is the amount of space um, occupied by a two-dimensional shape. We tend to think of this area as perhaps a yard, but we can also contextualize it as things that we need to cover, like paint on a wall or flooring for a room, um, wallpaper, or wrapping a gift box. As we're talking about this space that is either being occupied or covered up, we need to be able to measure it. So when we're dealing with area, our measurements are always in square units. It could be centimeters squared or inches squared, feet squared, meters squared, but we're dealing with things that are a perfect square. And to review what a square is, we have a flat plane figure where we have four equal straight sides and four right angles. So when we're dealing with area, we're looking for the two sides that hit a right angle. So in this example, we're going to try to find the area of this rectangle. And so we're looking at how many perfect squares we can get to fill it. So one way is to count all the squares, and another is to measure the distance across, which here we can count, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units wide. And then we can measure our length, which here would happen to be eight units long. And as you may remember, our formula for area of a rectangular shape would be area is length times our width. So we can think about either seven rows of eight or eight rows of seven. When we substitute 
our values in for our variables, we can take out the letter L and put in our 8, take out the letter W and put in our 7, and we can see that we have 56 square units. As we're reviewing other shapes as well, we're going to look at a lot of different shapes, and we're going to be considering how these perfect square units either cover them up or occupy them. So how does that relate to surface area? Surface area is going to be the sum of the areas of each surface, which means we can find the area of each individual surface and add them up together. As we look at this cylinder here, to find the surface area, we could picture a can of soup, and we could find the area of the circular lid and the area of the circular base. And then for the sides, we could consider splitting the label down the side, laying it flat, and finding the area of this rectangular piece. As we're looking for area of this cube, we could consider finding the area of each side and adding them up. And you can see, once again, we're measuring things in square units. As we look at this cone, we could consider measuring the side, laying it flat, and this piece here is called our sector. It's not a complete circle because it, would, it lays like this. And we have a circular base, which would be the bottom. So we would find the area of the sector first and the area of the circular base. As we're practicing and playing with um, area, sticky notes are a great way to play with the concept of area because they give students the ability to see perfect square units helps them connect it with labels, and it helps them see that we are covering up the space. So then let's review quickly what is volume. So as we're looking at volume, volume is the amount of a three-dimensional space that a shape occupies. We're looking at capacity. And if we want to contextualize volume, volume is going to be, we could consider how much water a swimming pool will hold, or measuring an amount of liquid, or finding how much capacity a jar would hold. So how do we measure volume? Once again, our units are going to be really important. We're looking at cubic units, because we need a three-dimensional shape where all sides are exactly the same, and we have a square, excuse me, 90-degree angle, and we can have cubic, excuse me, centimeters, inches, feet, or meters. So when we picture volume, our formula used to look, oh, excuse me, as we look at the picture volume, we're trying to fill this rectangular solid. So we're going to measure how many cubes we can fill this solid. So we're going to measure across the front, how high it is, and how far back. So if we measure our length, this rectangle was 12 units long, 4 units wide, and 4 units high. Now our old formula looked like this. Volume was length is times width times height. And this formula is very specific to a rectangular solid. On the 2014 GED sheet, we're going to see it written like this. Volume is capital B which means the area of my base times my height. And as you just saw, when we did review area of a rectangle, it was length times width. So when we solve for this to see the capacity of this rectangular solid, we're going to first find the area of my base, which here would be length, which is 12, times our width, which is 4, which will give us an area of 48 square units which means on this rectangular base, we could picture it would take 48 post-its to cover the bottom. So now as we put it over here, we're going to substitute in for the area of the base, our 48 square units, times our 4 units high, and we're going to get 192 cubic units to fill this entire rectangular base. So as we're looking at volume, the new formula that we're not as familiar with seeing this capital B is actually a more helpful formula because it helps with all prisms instead of just specifically rectangular ones. 
this capital B meaning the area of my base, as I look at this prism, my base here is a triangle. So my capital B is going to be represented by one-half base times height. When I look at this prism, my base is a circle. So here my capital B is going to be represented by pi r squared. And on this prism, my base is either a rectangle or a square, I'm not sure, but we know the formula for that is going to be length times width times my height all of, for all of these formulas. So once again, as we're working with our students and we're trying to get the idea of a three-dimensional um, label, dice are a great hands-on method. We can easily see volume filling a container. They don't have the perfect corners like we would like to see, but they give a student a great hands-on method, and it really gives them the idea of the difference between a post-it is something area, we're going to be covering something up, and the dice are a way to fill something, and it gives something very tangible to separate the difference between area and volume. Thank you, Rebecca. So let's go ahead, and um, now that we can think back on what Rebecca just explained so well and demonstrated in the previous slides, let's take a moment to check for understanding. So in your chat box, if you would please respond to the following question. A landscaper needs to order sod for a client's backyard. Given the dimensions of the yard, are you going to be solving for volume or area of the surface? So go ahead on your chat box and just type in either volume or area of surface. Wow, we have some resoundingly similar answers. Great, it looks like area, for all of you who said area is the correct answer, and I think I only did see area, so kudos. Well done, very great listening. Wow, they just keep on coming. Great participation, that's great to see. Let's move on to the next slide. So there is a variety, oh, let me back up one second. Since we are covering the surface of the soil, we would be solving for, there we go, area. But you guys already knew that, so we did, way to go. Um, there is a variety of three-dimensional figures on the 2014 GED formula sheet. So let's quick, quickly review what they are. A right pyramid is a three-dimensional object with many flat faces and straight edges with corners that meet at a central point above called an apex. Secondly, we have cones, and a cone is, has a circular base and one vertex right there where they all kind of meet together. Next, we have cylinders, um, which is a curved surface with parallel bases at each end. And usually they're circular. A sphere is <laughs> picking a point in space and then measuring out the same distance in every direction from that center point, and that would make up a sphere. We also have a rectangular or right prism, which is a solid where the top and bottom faces are the same size and shape and are parallel. The sides also meet at the top and bottom at a 90 degree angle. Finally, we have composite 3D figures where really it just means that you have more than one 3D figure that you are combining into one. In the illustration here, we have a cylinder which is flanked on both ends by a half sphere. So now that we've reviewed what the shapes are, how can we help our students navigate and apply the 2014 GED formula sheet to the figures? First, let's note some changes in the formula sheet. One of the major changes is that words are no longer written out in the formulas. On the left-hand side, we have the GED formula sheet, as everybody recognizes it because it's the current one. And on the right-hand side, we have the 2014 one. So you'll notice it's just variables and no words. <laughs> um, some formulas have been completely removed. I'll highlight in yellow those that have been removed, and the green arrows will illustrate to you ones that are still provided, but in a different format. So here we go. No longer do we have area of a square or a rectangle. The parallelogram still exists, but it no longer is written out base times height. It's just B times H. 
tri um, triangle is no longer available for them. Uh, trapezoid is there, but in um, just variables. And the circle area formula is no longer provided either. As we continue on to perimeter, square has been deleted, rectangle has been deleted, and um, the circumference of a circle, which really is the perimeter around the circle, those are all missing in action. We also have been, <laughs> um, the, the formula for the volume of a cube is also no longer on the new formula sheet. However, rectangular solid, the volume formula for that, is still there, but you will notice that it, like Rebecca just mentioned, it's a little different. It says capital B times H, and so we need to make sure that when we're teaching our students that we delineate that that capital B stands for the area of the base, so capital B area of the base, so that they know to substitute in length times width and then height, at least for the rectangular prism excuse me, rectangular solid. We also have the square pyramid formula. It's still there, but it looks completely different because once again we have the capital V standing for the area of the square and then multiplying it by height and one-third. Next we have the volume of the cylinder formula. It is completely um, shortened up since they did just change it all into variables pi r squared times h, um, and then the volume of a cone, that um, formula once again is completely shortened. Okay, I just saw someone chat, but it disappeared, so let me just one second, I talked about base sub 1 and base sub 2. I believe that's just an error in the font, it must not have transcribed very well. Thank you, it Rebecca. is base 1 plus base 2. I notice that it looks really spotty on the screen right now. So it is mm -hmm. just the transcribe. Yep. So it's still a p addition sign. Thank you very much, young lady. Okay, thank you. All right. So those, we need to, in summary, make sure that we're realizing that we have to teach that there are variables there, that capital B um, it represents always the area of a base, and it is different than the B that the, the um, the audience member put down that B with a small b is just talking about the length of the base. Okay, so very important to delineate for our students. So familiar variables for the dimensions on the 2014 GED formula sheet, um, V equals volume yet, and H is height, which is or at 90 degrees to the base, R still signifies radius, L is length, and pi is approximately 3.14. There's a nice illustration, that radius showing it's half of the distance across a circle or a sphere. Okay, so new variables in the 2014 GED formula sheet. Once again, there's that capital B we keep on <laughs> hammering so that we can remember it as teachers, so we teach it well to our students, so they don't try to keep on substituting the same um, formula when it's really different. Area of a rectangle is length times width whereas the B in a triangle would signify half base times height and area of a circle would be pi r squared. The P equals perimeter of the base, so that's just measuring around the edges of a two-dimensional shape. So we just add those together. Um, S means the slant height of, of the sides. You'll see the um, picture of the triangular pyramid in the lower right hand corner where they have the slant height goes from the apex down to the midpoint of the base there and that's the measurement that you'd have to get slant height. Um, and SA equals surface area. So let's talk a little bit more about how this would look with the, some real shapes and the formula itself. So a triangular versus rectangular bases. The rectang or excuse me, the triangular bases on the left there, we have the formula SA equals half PS plus the area of the base. So we have um, P1, meaning that we're talking about the first figure on the left there, it's the side plus side plus side, and there are three sides there since the triangle has three sides on the base. <laughs> um, and then the area of the base sub 1, meaning we're talking about that first 
figure there, we'd have to substitute in the, the formula, um, half PS plus B, we'd substitute the half base times height for the capital B, whereas in the rectangular base on the right, we have one, two, three, four sides, and we would have to add those up to get our measurement or our quantity for the parameter there in the formula, and the area of base would then be, since it is, could either be a rectangular or a square, since they are both um, rectangles, as length times width. Okay, so now that we have all of these formulas and variables swimming in our heads, where do we begin in a problem? So once we look at a story problem similar to this, or a problem on a test, the first thing we want to do is carefully identify the shape. Once we identify what shape we're working with, we can find the appropriate formula from the formula sheet. Then we'll work on assigning values to the dimensions, substitute values for our variables, and then we can solve. So let's see how this might look. Given this shape, we need to identify what it is. So when I look at this shape, I have a triangular base and I have three sides, so I know that this is a triangular pyramid. So I identified what shape I need, now I'm going to find the appropriate formula. So I'm going to look at my formula sheet, which is accessible to participants during the GED test, and I'm going to find my pyramid, and because it asks for surface area, I know that this right here is the formula that I need. So I'm going to grab that formula for my formula sheet. So my next step now is going to be assigning variables to the different dimensions. I don't want to just randomly grab numbers and try to guess where they go. I'm going to assign our variables. So looking at this formula, I know that I need the surface area is equal to one half perimeter of my base times the slant height plus the area of my base. So I want to start by understanding my base, which is right here. And when I deal with my triangular base, this here is going to be my base side. Here is going to be my height. Then I come over here and I have my slant height, which will be my 11 and 3 tenths. And now as I think about the perimeter of my base, I know my perimeter are the sides of my base, which is a triangle. Here's going to be one of my sides. Here's a second side. And here is a third side. So now I need to start substituting those values in for the variables of my formula. So let's look at that base again. The base, capital B is the area of my base, and I know that the area is one-half base times height of a triangle. So here my base side was 9, and my height is 7 and 8 tenths centimeters because that is 90 degrees to my base, so I know it's my height. I'm also going to consider the perimeter of my base, and so that is the sum of my sides. So I know my perimeter is going to be 9 plus 9 plus 9. So we have a lot of pieces of the puzzle, and I tell my students sometimes we just have to be detectives and look how these clues fit together. So as we solve, we're going to go back to our equation. And I realize we're covering a lot of words and a lot of variables, and we're using the word base in many ways. So we're going to look at this equation written out in words. My surface area is one-half perimeter of my base times my slant height plus one-half my base leg times my height. So as I substitute in values for these variables, my surface area is going to be one-half perimeter of my base was 9 plus 9 plus 9 times my slant height, which up here was 11 and 3 tenths, and I'm going to add that value to 1 half my base leg was 9, and my height of this base triangle was my 7 and 8 tenths. And at this point, obviously, participants and students will grab our calculators and we'll do some quick computation. So 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 27, and computing 9 times 7 and 8 tenths is 70 and 2 tenths. And one last step in our calculator, 
and we have the surface area is 187 and 65 hundredths centimeters. So as we get to this point, trying to make it a little bit meaningful, we can tell students, you know, if you could picture that we have post-its that are the size of a centimeter by a centimeter, it would take 187 and a little more than half to completely cover this triangular pyramid. Another type of question we tend to see are composite, which means we're putting different shapes together. So let's look at this picture of a snow cone. Our bottom here, we have a cone, and here on top we have a pile of flavored ice. So when we look at our shapes, we need to identify our shapes. Here is our cone, and this here on top is half of a sphere. When I go to my formula sheet, I'm able to grab the surface area of a cone is pi r s plus pi r squared. And when we looked at those cones, we realized that you would take the cone and flatten it, and that would be what we called our sector. And we also had the circular base that was here. When we're dealing with this paper cone, we do not have the circular base. So we're going to have to be those detectives and look for clues and realize that we don't need the circular base for this particular problem. So we're going to have to eliminate the circle, which means we're going to eliminate this part of the equation. Because pi r s was the area of the sector, pi r squared was the area of our circle. Now we're going to look at the top of our cone. And what we have is half a sphere. Now if we go to the formula sheet, we can easily see the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. But remembering that we only have half a sphere, we're going to need half of pi r squared. So when we do the math, half of 4 is 2. So we know that surface area of this half sphere is going to be 2 pi r squared. So now we're going to put our pieces together. But we're going to do a quick check-in. We're dealing with circles and pies and variables. All of our equations here are asking for radius, and we were given this length right here of a diameter of 4. So just for a quick check-in, if you're given the diameter of 4, what would the radius be? What would our value for r be? So go ahead and chat in your chat box what you think the radius will be. Very good. <laughs> Very speedy today. Excellent participation. Thank you. That's right. But that's one more detective work we have to really watch out for. It's very easy to grab numbers right out of a drawing or an example or a story problem and throw them in the problem. So we need to remember that as we're substituting, we're not going to be putting this 4 in anywhere. So let's go back to our equation. So the surface area of this composite, we're adding the cone plus this ice sphere on top. The cone part was pi r s, and this half sphere of ice was 2 pi r squared. So at this point, we're going to substitute. So we know that pi was 3.14. Our radius we determined to be 2. The slant height was given to us as 8. We know 2 times pi, once again, is 3.14. And our radius squared is going to be 2 squared. As we do our quick computations, grabbing our handy calculators, we're going to get 50 and 24 hundredths plus 25 and 12 hundredths. And we know the surface area of this is 75 and 36 hundredths inches squared. And once again, we're picturing those post-its that are an inch by one inch, and it would take 75 and a little bit more to completely cover the cone and the top of the ice. Occasionally, we're given a problem where we are given the answer and we have to work backwards to find a missing dimension. So let's look at this one right here. Find the radius of this sphere given that the surface area is 314 centimeters squared. So once again, we need to go to our formula sheet to find the formula for surface area of a sphere. And when we do that, our formula sheet gave us 
4 pi r squared. So we're going to substitute what we do know and solve for what we don't. We're given right here that the surface area is 314 centimeters squared. So we're going to plug in the 314 for our surface area equals 4 times pi, which is 3.14, times our radius squared, which we don't know. So the first step was substituting. Now we're going to work on our solving. So we're going to simplify by multiplying 4 times 3.14. And our next step is going to give us 314 is equal to 12 and 56 hundredths r squared. Now reviewing back to algebra, when we're trying to get our variable alone, we can ask ourselves what's happening between the number and the variable, and we're multiplying. So to undo multiplication, we need to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 12 and 56 hundredths. Grabbing our calculators, we're going to see that 25 is equal to r squared. So once again, we can ask ourselves what's happening to our variable, and we're squaring it. So to undo squaring, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And when we take the square root of 25, we get a positive and a negative 5 is equal to r. Now because this is a story problem or a shape, we know that we can't have a negative length, so we can throw out the root for the possible solution that r is equal to negative 5. So we know that our radius is 5 centimeters long. All right, so it's our turn to practice. So if you have a piece of paper and pencil handy, um, see if you can follow along and do this with us, please. So we have a test prep, prep example like I just mentioned. You'll see on the screen here that there is a can, and I assure you it is a Pringles can, and someone has decided to use it as a package for a gift, for a gift and they have decorated it accordingly. So we... Um, are going to need to determine how much paper is needed to cover the Pringles container given the following dimensions, nine and a half inches tall and three inches across. So once again, I'd love it if you would use your chat box feature and tell me, based on what Rebecca said earlier about our steps for the process of solving a problem, our first step was to identify the shape that we have. So why don't you go ahead and in your chat box, put down which shape we are working with here. Oh, there they come again. Yes. Okay, so a resoundingly we have cylinder. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so next, the next step was to find the appropriate formula. So we have a snippet of the GED 2014 formula sheet here, and we need to decide whether or not, since we already have determined it is a cylinder, we need to decide if we're going to use the, the formula for SA or V, surface area or volume. Oh, there's our first answer. Let's see what everybody else thinks. Good. Sounds great. I'm glad you guys are abbreviating. It makes things go faster. Okay, so um, next we would like to do the third step in our process, and that would be to assign values to each of the variables. So Rebecca's going to launch a test, and you get to pick where and what each of these numbers stand for in according to their variables. So once you are um, done taking the test, you may go ahead and submit it, and we will go over the results.
We're about almost 80 percent, so just a little bit longer, and we'll go ahead and look at those scores. Okay, I think we're close. So here are the results. Go ahead. Can everyone see them? Sorry, I didn't unmute myself. Um, oh, I can't are. see them. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking. Nobody was listening. Um, way to go. It looks like most of you we're able to get the second question right, and let's go back. Um, the correct answer we talked a little bit with Rebecca about when you're given the diameter three, what's the diameter of, since you're talking about the measure. If, Rebecca, if you can get back to the, yep. um, thank you. Maybe be patient. Is it there back? Go. Okay. Yep, it is, thank you. I just need a full screen, or maybe it is, okay. so. We have the formula there, 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And when we have the, um, the measurement of thir 3 inches across the top of the can, that means all the way across from one side. I'm pointing to my screen now, so let me use the mouse. Um, from one side of the can to the other, so that's the diameter. And since we just need the radius, then we divide that in half. So we um, can go ahead and do that. And then it looked like most of everybody understood that the height was the 9.5. That's right there since we're talking about inches tall. There's our formula again, a little bit of color coding going on. There are different variables. So we look at surface area equal to pi r. And I know Rebecca mentioned this earlier, how the label comes off the can and we flatten it out and all of a sudden it turns from the circumference down here, the circumference of the circle, to the length of a rectangle. And if you'll notice right underneath there in small letters, it says 2 pi r. So we can come to realize that that 2 pi r in our formula is covering the circle. And then we just have to make sure that we are um, accounting for the height of the can. So we have to multiply that by the h, the value for h. So there's our diameter of 3 inches, which you assigned, and then h equals 9.5 for the height. Mm -hmm. So we go ahead and we start filling them in um, 2 times 3.14, um, which is pi, and times 1 and a half since that is the radius. And we once again substitute 9.5 for h for our height, since that's what it is. And then next we go ahead and we look at um, the brackets there on the right hand side of the pi r squared, which is the area of the circle. And so if you look at the illustration there in the lower corner of the screen, lower left corner, it says pi r squared there and that, because that's our base and it's the area of the circle if we needed to color, cover it. So we once again can go ahead and substitute values. I can wait a couple seconds if people want to try and solve this themselves. I'll count to in my head. Okay, go ahead and add on the 2 times 3.14 times 1.5 and since it's r squared it's actually the um, radius. Look at all of these great mathematicians over here answering. Um, I'm getting distracted. 1.5, and since it is r squared, we have the base times itself, which is 1.5 times 1.5. And if we have done our math correctly, 89 and 49 hundredths plus 14 and 13 hundredths equals ta -da, 103 and 62 hundredths inches squared. Did anybody have their units on there? But you know what? You have the right number. Um, <laughs> um, let me think. So we need to make sure that's inches squared because we are taking into consideration 
two dimensions, that surface that we're covering. So, um, and if we can label it length times width, then our students will start to understand the difference between having something squared and something cubed in real life. You don't have to apologize. All right, I'm going to turn it on over to Rebecca. And that's not the next slide, no, sorry about I, it. I'll just leave it be. No, it's good. All right, we have one more example for you. Um, given a rectangular prism with a surface area of 790 square units, find the dimension, missing dimension. So once again, this is a situation where we're going to be working backwards. So we're going to identify the shape, and this is a rectangular prism, and we need to find the appropriate formula. So we're looking on our formula sheet. We have the surface area of a rectangular prism is the perimeter of the base, there's that lowercase p again, times our height plus 2 area of our bases. Now before this formula, this is a newer looking formula, but what we previously used to do is find the area of the base and the area of the top, which were the same because it's a rectangle, so we would double it. Find this area and remember that there's 2 and we would double it and find the front and remember that there was 2 and double that. So this formula, which is a new way to look at it, is actually a quicker shortcut of doing the, all those different math problems. So let's use the formula from the sh formula sheet. We know that lowercase p stands for the perimeter of our base, whatever shape we're looking at. Here our base is this rectangle, so we know the perimeter of a rectangle is double your length plus double your width or 5 plus 16 plus 5 plus 16, adding all the way around. So we know the perimeter is 2 times 5 plus 2 times 16, which is 10 plus 32, which would be 42 units long. So, we, so right now what we have found is the perimeter of our base, which is standing for this blue P right here. The other variable we're going to focus on is this capital B. Now remember, there's, we say the word base a lot, so we want to be careful that capital B is the area of our base. So we're looking at taking the same base again. Now we want to find its area. So area of a rectangle, because this base happens to be a rectangle, is length times our width. So we're going to grab our values. Our length is 5. Our width is 16 and length times width would be 5 times 16 would be 80. So we have found the perimeter of our base and the capital B, we have found the area of our base. So now we're going to plug it into the equation. Typically you don't have to do separate math problems. I'm just doing it right now so we can see all the different things that are happening. So if we substitute in our values, we were given in our story that the surface area was 790 units squared. So here's our 790 replacing our surface area is equal to our P, which is 42, times our H, which in this case we do not know, plus 2 times the area of our base, which is 80. So we're going to go back into the algebra mode and simplify we have 790 equals 42H plus, so we just took here our 2 times our 80, and we got 160. Now as we go through the steps of solving this for H, we're going to kind of go backwards through order of operations. So we want to remove this positive 160 before we try to divide away the 42. So because we're adding 160 to undo it, we want to subtract 160 from both sides. And our new equation will look like 630 equals 42 times h. Once again, to undo this multiplication, we're going to divide both sides by 42. And we're going to get that 630 divided by 42 is our height. So our height in this case would be 15 units. So what we're hoping for after all of these steps and all these examples is that we don't expect people to have these formulas memorized and you don't need to memorize them because they are on the GED formula sheet. But what you want to have is a sense of knowing when to use each one, knowing how to find the formula you need in each scenario, 
and then being able to solve and simplify. So as we come to oops, our close, and I scooted past our screen, I apologize. We want to thank you for attending this EQIP series webinar. This is the fifth in the series um, for now. If you have any questions, feel free to chat them now. We still do have a few minutes, so we can possibly go through a few more things, answer a few extra questions, or we can also post things on the MLC Moodle site. That Moodle site is a great resource for after this webinar. It's a place to ask questions, um, have colleagues comment on things, and continue the conversation. There are also resources there. The website is right here, the online.themlc.org, which will be in your follow-up email. Also look forward to a post-webinar follow-up email coming next week or after the webinar closes. Does anyone have good ideas for materials and manipulatives for surface area and Volume, are the terms rectangular solid in the chat box? Are the terms rectangular solid and rectangular prism interchangeable? That is a good question. I think I've heard them interchangeable. I not, I would, um, I guess it could take me just a minute to think about that. Um, does anyone else want to voice? I believe so. I believe that they are the same, but we can certainly research that and get that on that Moodle site. <laughs> are there any other questions or any of the examples we want to look at? If you have an opportunity, we can also raise your hand and we can unmute you if you want to just ask a question. Like I said, the MLC um, website will be, is an excellent resource for all these things. The manipulative, does anyone have suggestions for manipulatives? I've been, in for my classroom, like I said, I've been using um, post-its and dice, and it helps just visualize what's happening. I see a question that says explain V and capital V. Um, capital V is volume. I'm not sure what the lowercase v is. Did you see that on a formula sheet? The two websites where the f these will be archived. They are also on the Atlas website, but if the here is the website for the MLC Moodle, which has the other previous um, EQIP webinars also on there right now. This one will be on there soon, but the other ones are, are excuse me, are already on there. Amy has a question. AtlasABE.org website. I see that Amy has a question. Okay. Amy, you are unmuted if you'd like to share. Can you hear me? This is yes. Amy. Okay. Um, I'm just, I see Kelly's question about manipulatives. I just Google searched right now printable nets for geometric solids. And um, that looks useful. Um, there's a question about where I found a clear rectangular solid. I actually don't have one, but I use the dice to show volume, and you can build shapes with dice as well. So I wish I had clear solids, um, but I don't. We have a, another uh, hand raised. Donna May, you're unmuted if you'd like to ask your question. Oh, um, I'm not, I don't have a question, but I have, um, I wrote on there, at the Math Institute, the session I went to, um, she used these um, 
geo model folding shapes or the nets that the other person was talking about and they really help to visualize all the different shapes you were actually taking the surface area of. And we ordered them for our site. And I put the name of the company, it's called EAI Education. And they're called Geomodel Folding Shapes. Those sound great, thank you. Thank you. I have also, this is Renee, I've also um, been to the post office lately, and if, at least at my post office, they have the boxes for mailing that are completely flat. They have not been folded into boxes yet to show volume, so you could use that as, it's not see-through, but you could um, do both surface area and volume for that once you, once you put it together. Yeah, I see an example in the chat box about um, using a shape to find the area while it's flat and then folding it up to f make the solid. Those are great examples with the boxes. So you can use both surface area and volume. Very good. Well, if there, feel free to hang around and throw in some chat questions if you have them. If not, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate your attendance, and we look forward to hearing your evaluation as we think about going forward with, more, with these equip. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.